All right, it's quick tip time. You can use multiple UV maps to non-destructively layer details into your material. What's that mean? Let me show you. I've spent hours unwrapping this scene, and it's just perfect, except I want to add some details now. A damage section would be awesome to add, but I can't change my UV map, so I'll just add a new one. With this new layer selected, I'm going to start unwrapping my object. Um, I don't uh, want it to touch the floor at all, so I'm going to make sure that the UV for the floor is, is scaled down and in the corner where it, it can't be influenced by the texture. And then I'm just going to go ahead and place the texture where I want it on the wall. Yeah, that's a good place. Moving over to the Material Node Editor, I'm going to find the UV Map node and enter the name of the UV layer that I added. I'm going to add a Mix RGB node and layer it into the color, making sure to use the alpha of my damage texture to mix it correctly. As you can see, this works, but we have a bit of a problem. The texture is repeating around the wall. This has, fortunately, a very simple solution. Set the texture to Clip instead of Extend. Now it'll show up simply projected onto the wall. Now what's that you say? You want to add your awesome graffiti to the scene? Again, not a problem. Just make sure that you save your image with a transparent background. Let's import it and add another UV layer. UV map the model the way you want. And when you get to the material editor, make sure that it's using the, that correct UV layer. Mix it into the color in the same way as the other image, making sure that you use the alpha channel to mix it correctly. Again, we haven't changed the extension mapping settings yet. Make sure that you change that if you don't want it to repeat. Check that out. This is a really quick and easy way to add a lot of detail without having to create a new texture for every wall that you want to be unique. All right, but let's look at a more practical example. This shirt has already been given a base UV set. If I add to color grid to it, you can see that it's uh, just a simple UV unwrap with minimal stretching. Now I have two maps that I want to add to this. I've got a cloth detail texture and a seam texture that I made with Photoshop. I've got two seams on this texture, but we're just going to use the top one. Now I'm going to add these maps in the same way as the past example. As the base, I'm going to add the fabric texture, scaling it to an appropriate size and plugging it into a bump node. I'm now going to add a UV layer for the seams, select the areas that I want the seams to go, and unwrap them. For this unwrap, it's going to be pretty simple. All I just need to do is align them to the seam. When you're done unwrapping your model, jump into the material editor. Just like last time, you need to choose the UV layer that's appropriate for your texture. I'm mixing it into the bump, making sure that it's weighted on the seam side. For this texture, or for this example, I'm going to pass the same texture through a good old color ramp node. And I'm going to use this as a mask uh, to go between two different colors. It's super easy, super fast. Now, now what, what's that I hear? You want to add something? Yeah, OK. You know the drill at this point. Unwrap the object onto a UV map to project the texture, and align it the way you want it. Mix the texture into the material using the appropriate UV map, and change the clipping if you don't want it repeating. For a decal, you get extra points if you plug it into the bump and the roughness. Now, a word of warning, this won't let you had an infinite amount of decals. You're limited to eight UV layers. But eight is pretty generous, uh, and it's pretty easy to work with in that limitation. Uh, also, this technique isn't going to work if you want to export to a game engine. UV layers are a lot more expensive over there. Um, you can, of course, bake a texture down if that's your goal. Hopefully, that gives you some inspiration for working in Blender, though. Your materials are what you make out of them. Don't be limited by the seamless textures that you've downloaded, but build the material that you need for the story that you want to tell. By the way, if you liked this, go check out the tutorial that I made over on CG Cookie. It's on material layering and procedural masking, and I'm excited to be working with them. And that's the story. 
If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave me a message on Instagram or send me an email.